Shavua Tov, everybody. A good week to you all. How was your weekend? I hope it was restful. I hope it was peaceful. I hope you got to spend time with those you love. So welcome to our family. Welcome to the Israel Brief hosted by me, Rolene Marks, brought to you as always by Lay of the Land. I'm going to give you some details where you can find us online in a few minutes. And we bring you those top stories making headlines from Israel every Monday to Thursday. I know some of you or many of you actually complain to me that there is so much bias in, in, in the media out there and you don't often get to hear Israel's perspective. So we endeavor to bring you the news from Israel. So just before we get into those top stories making headlines, and it is day 164 of Israel's war with Hamas that started with the horrific attacks on the 7th of October, I still, every morning when I wake up, I think to myself, there are people who are still being held hostage for 164 days. We don't know, uh, you know, what they're eating. We don't know if they're okay. Uh, how are their families doing? It's absolute agony. But before we get into the headlines, I just want to tell you tomorrow I will be in the north of Israel. I will be going with the um, government press office with journalists. Uh, we are going up to the north, to the northern border. I will try and bring you an Israel brief from the border. However, uh, because the security situation is very, very precarious, I mean, we're not allowed to go without our protective vests. The, the security situation is very precarious. So um, if you don't uh, get a brief uh, tomorrow from the border, please understand that we have to respect the uh, security parameters and, uh, and being allowed up there uh, to a, pl a part of the country and, and, and to conflict which is not being reported in the media at all and that is Israel's escalation with uh, Hezbollah last week. Many, many rockets fired by Hezbollah, uh, another Iranian proxy far more sophisticated than Hamas into Israeli territory. So housekeeping over, let's get into the top stories and the morning started with agony for many of us. As you can tell by my accent, I originally come from South Africa, a very close-knit community. And today we received the word uh, following the announcement to, to the family that Daniel Peretz, a 22-year-old soldier from South Africa, who we believed was being held hostage, uh, has been confirmed dead. It has been confirmed that Daniel was murdered on the 7th of October by Hamas terrorists. He was a, a, a soldier on duty. We know he put up a valiant fight against the terrorists who, who infiltrated our territory and he was killed and his body taken into the Gaza Strip. When we talk about negotiations for the release of hostages, we also talk about the remains of Israelis and our soldiers who, who are being held by Hamas as well. There are no words of adequate comfort that we can bring his, his family, our community is absolutely devastated. But to Rabbi Peretz, the Peretz family, may you be comforted with the mourners of Zion. May Daniel's memory forever be a blessing. Hashem Yankum Damo. And while we are talking about hostages, the Prime Minister has given the green light for a delegation led by Mossad Chief David Barnea to depart for Doha. Negotiations will begin again today indirectly. Our delegation will speak through the Qataris and the Egyptians to try and broker a truce that would see a pause in the fighting between Israel and Hamas and the release of our hostages. Now, one thing that the, uh, the army has made clear is that there's a lot of conjecture 
uh, around the world in, in many different media, a lot of people thinking that they know what is contained in those negotiations. Unless you are sitting in that negotiation room, we don't have the exact details. And the army, the Israel's police, the government have cautioned people uh, that uh, the, this is, of course, a very, very sensitive issue. And there is a lot being shared on WhatsApp groups up there. Just to be aware that we don't know the exact details, only those who are sitting in the room know precisely the negotiation points. We now go to the United States where uh, Senate Democratic Majority Leader Chuck Schumer last week said that he calls for snap elections. Uh, he believes that Prime Minister Netanyahu needs to be replaced. Now, of course, this was met by a lot of anger here in Israel. Regardless of what many think about the Prime Minister, and yes, his approval ratings are very, very low at the moment, Israel is engaged in a war. We do not need a six-month election um, uh, uh, election uh, routine or election, I forget the word, I mean, you, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about, uh, a build-up to, to elections while we are busy dealing with a war that is actually a, a battle for our very existence. And this was met with round condemnation, not only by the Prime Minister himself, but also his opposition, opposition leader Benny Gantz, also recognizing that not only is this greatly insulting to the people of Israel, because we will make those decisions, um, not our foreign allies, but this is not how you treat uh, a, a, an allied country. Uh, as uh, the Prime Minister said, Israel is not a banana republic. The Israeli electorate will decide um, who will be and who won't be uh, our leader. And this also puts Israel in a very precarious position because it sends a message out to Iran and, and, and the other terrorist organizations that tensions between Israel and uh, our greatest ally, the United States, are widening, are deepening, uh, and also that many believe that our leadership is weak. Very, very irresponsible words from the Senate majority leader. And yes, there have been calls for elections in Israel. We are a democracy and people are free to, to give their opinions. But this is done internally. It is not for anybody else to interfere in Israel's domestic politics. This morning, we received news that there was heavy fighting in Shifa Hospital inside the Gaza Strip. Now, you guys remember just a couple of weeks ago, we were talking a lot about Shifa Hospital, which was the site of many battles. And we know that IDF Special Forces had uncovered a massive tunnel in Shifa Hospital. And we also have the video footage and the testimony from hostages that, that have been released that they were taken to Shifa Hospital. Last week, Judith Ranan, who was one of the first hostages to be freed, spoke about how she and her daughter and other hostages were taken to a hospital and how the staff cheered, especially the nurses. Now, operating on intelligence gathered by the Shin Bet or the Shabak, our forces knew that there were Hamas operatives inside Shifa Hospital using that as a command base. Now, according to the laws of armed conflict, a hospital does become a legitimate military target when it is used as a human shield, as in this case it was, uh, or, or when the enemy uh, attacks troops from inside the hospital, which is the case now with Shifa. And again, I recommend you guys to read Major John Spencer's excellent op-ed, uh, which he wrote for Newsweek magazine, explaining how hospitals become a legitimate military target in a, a time of war. Israel, uh, our intention is to minimize as many civilian casualties as possible and to mitigate as much uh, disruption to the medical staff and, and patients inside the hospital sent in our own doctors, uh, Arabic speakers, medical personnel, uh, civilians who could help to ensure that uh, there were as few disruptions as possible. 
We know that at least 80 Hamas operatives were arrested and have been taken by the IDF Unit 504 for interrogation. So we still have a situation where Hamas is so deeply embedded within the civilian infrastructure. And finally, yesterday, Israel's Knesset unanimously approved uh, that the 7th of October this year will be a National Day of Memorial. Every year now to come, the 24th of Tishrei, which is the Hebrew date of the atrocities of last year, will stand as a National Memorial Day separate to uh, Yom HaZikaron, which is a day that we remember fallen soldiers and victims of terror. The 7th of October was the most horrific attack on the Jewish people since the Holocaust and we do believe that it, it does need a day that stands alone in, in, in its devastation and its memorial. So this year, just to reiterate, will be the first year we observe on the English date and in the, fo the following years it will be on the Hebrew date, the 24th of the Hebrew month of Tishrei. And that brings me to the end of today's edition of the Israel Brief. Guys, don't forget to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. Our Facebook community is at Lottel site. We're right here on YouTube at the Israel Brief. If you like our content, please click on that red subscribe button and spread the word. We are on X at Lay of the Land 5. I'm Rolly Marx. I want you to all take care of yourselves, take care of each other. A big hug from me to you. It's been a really, really difficult day and it helps to know I am amongst friends and family. And I will see you again either from the north or in studio, hopefully tomorrow. God bless.